Welcome to the Echoes of Faith podcast on the Living Bible Hub Network, where we believe living for Jesus the Christ is easier than you think when you meditate on his word in small bite portions every day. I am your host, Sherry T., and this is the best day of your life because God is in control. We hope these few moments of Bible reading and prayer will empower you to have faith in God, inspire you to pray for your family, friends, and community, and live every day in fellowship with Jesus. Our affirmation for today is, we are excited, blessed, grateful, and most of all, we are believers for life. We believe in John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. Our Father, which art in heaven, how excellent is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In the name of Jesus, hear our prayer. Forgive us of our sins. Listen to our cry for mercy. Father, teach us your ways and lead us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. May your love abound for us more and more each day. As we follow your principles and believe in your promises, may the spirit of wisdom, power, knowledge, guide us into all truth so we may be able to discern what is good and pure and blameless until the day of Jesus Christ's return. May the meditation of our hearts and the words of our mouth be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, you are our strength and redeemer. In the most precious and the most powerful name by which we all are saved, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Eddie J, let our community, the listening audience, know what's happening on Facebook with you. So every Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, end of the week word from the Peoria Friendship Missionary Baptist Church Facebook page or the Eddie Jackson Jr. page. Tune in. Our scripture reading will come from the book of Joshua. Chapter 22. Then Joshua summoned the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, and said to them, You have done all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded, and you have obeyed me in everything I commanded. For a long time now, to this very day, you have not deserted your fellow Israelites, but have carried out the mission the Lord your God gave you. Now that the Lord your God has given them rest as he promised, return to your homes in the land that Moses the servant of the Lord gave you on the other side of the Jordan. But be very careful to keep the commandment and the law that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you, to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him, to keep his commands, to hold fast to him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Then Joshua blessed them and sent them away, and they went to their homes. To the half-tribe of Manasseh, Moses had given land in Bashan, and to the other half of the tribe, Joshua gave land on the west side of the Jordan, along with their fellow Israelites. When Joshua sent them home, he blessed them, saying, Return to your homes with your great wealth, with large herds of livestock, with silver, gold, bronze, and iron, and a great quantity of clothing, and divide the plunder from your enemies with your fellow Israelites. So the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh left the Israelites at Shiloh and Canaan to return to Gilead, their own land, which they had acquired in accordance with the command of the Lord through Moses. When they came to Goliath near the Jordan in the land of Canaan, the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh built an imposing altar there by the Jordan. And when the Israelites heard that they had built the altar on the border of Canaan at Goliath near the Jordan on the Israelite side, the whole assembly of Israel gathered at Shiloh to go to war against them. So the Israelites sent Phinehas, son of Eleazar the priest, to the land of Gilead, to Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. With him they sent ten of the chief men, one from each of the tribes of Israel, each the head of a family division among the Israelite clans. When they went to Gilead, to Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, they said to them, The whole assembly of the Lord says, How could you break faith with the God of Israel like this? How could you turn away from the Lord and build yourselves an altar in rebellion against him now? Was not the sin of Peor enough for us? Up to this very day we have not cleansed ourselves from that sin, even though a plague fell on the community of the Lord. 
And are you now turning away from the Lord? If you rebel against the Lord today, tomorrow he will be angry with the whole community of Israel. If the land you possess is defiled, come over to the Lord's land where the Lord's tabernacle stands and share the land with us. But do not rebel against the Lord or against us by building an altar for yourselves other than the altar of the Lord our God. When Achan, son of Zerah, was unfaithful in regard to the devoted things, did not wrath come on the whole community of Israel? He was not the only one who died for his sin. Then Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh replied to the heads of the clans of Israel, The Mighty One, God the Lord, the Mighty One, God the Lord, He knows, and let Israel know. If this has been in rebellion or disobedience to the Lord, do not spare us this day. If we have built our own altar to turn away from the Lord, and to offer burnt offerings and grain offerings, or to sacrifice fellowship offerings on it, may the Lord Himself call us to account. No, we did it for fear that someday your descendants might say to ours, What do you have to do with the Lord, the God of Israel? The Lord has made the Jordan a boundary between us and you. You Reubenites and Gadites, you have no share in the Lord, so your descendants might cause ours to stop fearing the Lord. That is why we said, Let us get ready and build an altar, but not for burnt offerings or sacrifices. On the contrary, it is to be a witness between us and you and the generations that follow that we will worship the Lord at His sanctuary with our burnt offerings, sacrifices, and fellowship offerings. Then in the future, your descendants will not be able to say to ours, you have no share in the Lord. We said, if they ever say this to us or to our descendants, we will answer, Look at the replica of the Lord's altar, which our ancestors built, not for burnt offerings and sacrifices, but as a witness between us and you. Far be it from us to rebel against the Lord and turn away from Him today by building an altar for burnt offerings, grain offerings, and sacrifices, other than the altar of the Lord our God that stands before His tabernacle. When Phinehas, the priest, and the leaders of the community, the heads of the clans of the Israelites, heard what Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh had to say, they were pleased. And Phinehas, son of Eleazar, the priest, said to Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh, Today we know that the Lord is with us, because you have not been unfaithful to the Lord in this matter. Now you have rescued the Israelites from the Lord's hand. Then Phinehas, son of Eleazar, the priest, and the leaders returned to Canaan from their meeting with the Reubenites and Gadites in Gilead, and reported to the Israelites. They were glad to hear the report and praised God. And they talked no more about going to war against them to devastate the country where the Reubenites and the Gadites lived. And the Reubenites and the Gadites gave the altar this name, a witness between us that the Lord is God. Chapter 23 After a long time had passed, and the Lord had given Israel rest from all their enemies around them, Joshua, by then a very old man, summoned all Israel, their elders, leaders, judges, and officials, and said to them, I am very old. You yourselves have seen everything the Lord your God has done to all these nations for your sake. It was the Lord your God who fought for you. Remember how I have allotted as an inheritance for your tribes all the land of the nations that remain, the nations I conquered between the Jordan and the Mediterranean Sea in the west. The Lord your God himself will push them out for your sake. He will drive them out before you, and you will take possession of their land as the Lord your God promised you. Be very strong. Be careful to obey all that is written in the book of the law of Moses without turning aside to the right or to the left. Do not associate with these nations that remain among you. Do not invoke the names of their gods or swear by them. You must not serve them or bow down to them. But you are to hold fast to the Lord your God as you have until now. The Lord has driven out before you great and powerful nations. To this day, no one has been able to withstand you. 
one of you routs a thousand because the Lord your God fights for you just as he promised. So be very careful to love the Lord your God. But if you turn away and ally yourselves with the survivors of these nations that remain among you, and if you intermarry with them and associate with them, then you may be sure that the Lord your God will no longer drive out these nations before you. Instead, they will become snares and traps for you, whips on your backs and thorns in your eyes, until you perish from this good land which the Lord your God has given you. Now I am about to go the way of all the earth. You know with all your heart and soul that not one of all the good promises the Lord your God gave you has failed. Every promise has been fulfilled. Not one has failed. But just as all the good things the Lord your God has promised you have come to you, so he will bring on you all the evil things he has threatened until the Lord your God has destroyed you from this good land he has given you. If you violate the covenant of the Lord your God, which he commanded you, and go and serve other gods and bow down to them, the Lord's anger will burn against you, and you will quickly perish from the good land he has given you. Chapter 24 Then Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel at Shechem. He summoned the elders, leaders, judges, and officials of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. Joshua said to all the people, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Long ago your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates River and worshipped other gods. But I took your father Abraham from the land beyond the Euphrates and led him throughout Canaan and gave him many descendants. I gave him Isaac, and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. I assigned the hill country of Seir to Esau, but Jacob and his family went down to Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron, and I afflicted the Egyptians by what I did there, and I brought you out. When I brought your people out of Egypt, you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued them with chariots and horsemen as far as the Red Sea. But they cried to the Lord for help, and he put darkness between you and the Egyptians. He brought the sea over them and covered them. You saw with your own eyes what I did to the Egyptians. Then you lived in the wilderness for a long time. I brought you to the land of the Amorites, who lived east of the Jordan. They fought against you, but I gave them into your hands. I destroyed them from before you, and you took possession of their land. When Balak, son of Zippor, the king of Moab, prepared to fight against Israel, he sent for Balaam, son of Beor, to put a curse on you. But I would not listen to Balaam, so he blessed you again and again, and I delivered you out of his hand. Then you crossed the Jordan and came to Jericho. The citizens of Jericho fought against you, as did also the Amorites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hittites, Girgashites, Hivites, and Jebusites. But I gave them into your hands. I sent the hornet ahead of you, which drove them out before you, also the two Amorite kings. You did not do it with your own sword and bow. So I gave you a land on which you did not toil, and cities you did not build, and you live in them and eat from vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. Now, fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. 
It was the Lord our God himself who brought us and our parents up out of Egypt from that land of slavery and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entire journey and among all the nations through which we traveled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites, who lived in the land. We too will serve the Lord because he is our God. Joshua said to the people, You are not able to serve the Lord. He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your rebellion and your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, He will turn and bring disaster on you and make an end of you after He has been good to you. But the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, we are witnesses, they replied. Now then, said Joshua, throw away the foreign gods that are among you and yield your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, We will serve the Lord our God and obey him. On that day, Joshua made a covenant for the people, and there at Shechem he reaffirmed for them decrees and laws. And Joshua recorded these things in the book of the law of God. Then he took a large stone and set it up there under the oak near the holy place of the Lord. See, he said to all the people, This stone will be a witness against us. It has heard all the words the Lord has said to us. It will be a witness against you if you are untrue to your God. Then Joshua dismissed the people, each to their own inheritance. After these things, Joshua son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of 110. And they buried him in the land of his inheritance at timnath Sirah, in the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Gaash. Israel served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua and of the elders who outlived him and who had experienced everything the Lord had done for Israel. And Joseph's bones, which the Israelites had brought up from Egypt, were buried at Shechem in the tract of land that Jacob bought for a hundred pieces of silver from the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem. This became the inheritance of Joseph's descendants. And Eliezer, son of Aaron, died and was buried at Gibeah, which had been allotted to his son Phinehas in the hill country of Ephraim. This concludes our scripture reading for today. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his word. If you have planned anything in your life, use the calendar, cell phone, or have a social media account, text Believe in the Plan, 877-670-1975. Thank you. I ask that question because it's personal to me. I am a planner. I have always been a planner. When I was in high school, I had a plan for what college and the rest of my life would look like. I love having a plan and following it. I remember working on my plan in college when I had a nagging sensation that something was missing. The desire and the drive were gone. I was miserable, empty. I had lost direction. It came to a point that I needed to have a conversation with my parents, but I wasn't even sure of the conversation I wanted to have with them. So one day I went into a phone booth. Yes, yes, I'm dating myself. Instead of me calling my parents, I had a serious conversation with God. Y'all know how we do in times of trouble. Who do you call? God. But this time it was different. God was trying to get my attention. His ways are not my ways. My ways are not his ways. It was at that moment that I remembered reading a quote that simply said, when God is executing his plans in our lives, he is designing and arranging events that continue to unfold until his purpose is revealed. It was in that moment I surrendered my plans and said yes to the will of God. Look, 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 look. It was scary because it meant that I would transfer schools. I was on my way to a Bible college. When I surrendered to God's plan, I felt a sense of peace come all over me. 
but the real lesson came many years later when I was involved in a freak accident at work that left me completely incapacitated. I mean, I could barely do daily activities. Getting out of bed was tough. Cooking for my family was even more challenging. I couldn't drive and I could barely go to the bathroom by myself. I remember being in a place saying, what's your plan, God? What's your plan now? Suddenly, my thoughts went back to that phone booth experience where I made a commitment to completely surrender. Even though I was in pain every single day, even though I was frustrated with where my life was, I kept the faith that God had a plan for me. The day came when I was ultimately out of pain. To God be the glory. I don't know what you're going through. You might be in a place where you're feeling helpless or hopeless, or you may feel like something is missing. I want to invite you. I want to encourage you to have a better relationship with God. See, when you surrender your plans for God's plans, He will lead you to where you need to be. If He did it for me, I'm for sure He'll do it for you. My name is Sherry T. And as always, it's been an absolute pleasure sharing my story with you today. Thank you for listening to the Echoes of Faith podcast on the Living Bible Hub Network. Partner with us. Like, subscribe, support. Visit our website, livingbiblehub.com. Until next time, peace, love, and blessing.